Amid the Middle Eastern desert, where summer temperatures reach 50 degrees and gusts of wind can turn into 100-meter high walls of sand that swallow entire cities in just minutes, people once believed that nature was something humans could never interfere with. Yet Qatar, a small nation in the Sea of Sand, chose to break that limit. They cooled a massive open-air stadium, keeping the temperature stable in the scorching heat, allowing spectators to watch football in a chilled atmosphere in the heart of the desert. Not stopping at conquering the heat, Qatar also uses cloud seeding technology to force the sky to create rain. And that has become bold proof that climate is not only something to adapt to, but something humans can design, control, and optimize. Today, join Mandarin Tech as we explore how a nation in the desert is rewriting the operating rules of the Earth. The Arabian Peninsula has long been one of the hottest regions on the planet, but in just the past 20 years, temperatures here have risen so quickly that scientists are becoming alarmed. Summer temperatures frequently exceeding 50 degrees C are no longer rare, especially in Qatar, the UAE, and eastern Saudi Arabia. The heat combined with high humidity makes the human body feel temperatures even more extreme than in the Sahara. This harsh climate brings clear consequences. Groundwater is depleting at an alarming rate. As rainfall decreases and evaporation intensifies, countries are forced to rely on desalination technology and artificial rainmaking programs to sustain daily life and production. In addition, sandstorms can form within minutes, blowing massive walls of dust hundreds of meters high. All these factors make the Arabian Peninsula one of the regions under the most severe climate pressure in the world. Under such conditions, traditional cooling technologies become nearly useless. High humidity causes evaporative cooling to fail, household air conditioners overload and consume enormous amounts of power. This pressure forces Gulf countries, especially Qatar, to turn to bolder climate technologies, controlling temperatures for entire stadiums and actively creating rain in the middle of the desert. Built to serve the 2022 World Cup, Qatar's stadiums had to meet demands higher than any sports project before them. Creating a cool playing environment in a completely open-air setting. To achieve this, they had to establish an independent microclimate, essentially constructing an invisible bubble of cold air surrounding the entire stadium. Within this isolated environment, every parameter from temperature to airflow is precisely controlled regardless of how conditions outside may change. To create comfortable playing conditions in the stadiums, Qatar did not begin with air conditioning, but applied a series of passive cooling measures. All stadiums were oriented along an east-west axis to maximize shade and limit direct sunlight on the stands. The exterior colors and materials were also optimized. Al Bait Stadium initially used a black tone to mimic a Bedouin tent, but it was later changed to white to reduce heat absorption, significantly lowering surface temperatures. The facades were designed to reflect heat, redirect hot winds, and prevent heat transfer into the interior. Many stadiums were also equipped with retractable roofs to reduce the load on the cooling system while helping retain the layer of chilled air inside. However, in extremely high temperatures, passive measures are only the first step. Qatar needed an active cooling system strong enough to create an independent microclimate, Solar energy was used to power massive chillers, while district cooling systems supplied centrally chilled water to each stadium. Notably, a series of absorption chillers used solar-generated thermal energy to produce cold water, which was then pumped through heat exchangers before cool air was blown into the stands through nozzles positioned around the stadium. Hot air was drawn back in, filtered to remove dust and bacteria, then cooled again before being recirculated. The entire system functioned as a closed-loop cycle, forming a thin, stable layer of cool air around spectators. Thanks to many years of research in fluid dynamics, Qatar could precisely adjust the speed and direction of airflow to maximize efficiency while reducing energy consumption. What is remarkable is that Qatar did not patent these innovations, but shared the technology freely with other countries. Because they understood that in a century of climate change, 
The world needs more places capable of creating artificial climates for human survival. But cooling only addresses the surface of the problem. The root of the crisis is still water. And to survive in the desert, they must create rain on their own. Artificial rainmaking technology begins with a very basic principle of meteorology. Clouds can only produce rain when there are enough condensation nuclei. Tiny particles that water vapor can cling to, gather around, and grow into droplets. However, in the Middle East, many clouds, even when full of moisture, still fail to produce rain simply because they lack natural particles to trigger the condensation process. The solution is to deliberately create artificial nuclei and deliver them to the right locations inside the cloud. Aircraft from the UAE, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and China carry flares containing salt, dry ice, and silver iodide. When the aircraft flies through the cloud, the chemicals are ignited or released, dispersing into millions of tiny particles thanks to the vortices generated behind the wings. Water vapor immediately clings to these particles, grows, and falls as rain. This technology is no longer just experimental, but has become meteorological infrastructure for many countries. The UAE launched its program in 2000 and now performs more than 200 missions per year, with many areas recording rainfall increases from 10 to 30 percent. Qatar has also invested tens of millions of USD into this system to boost humidity and raise groundwater levels. China has gone even further, once using more than 1,100 silver iodide rockets to control the weather during the 2008 Beijing Olympics, ensuring clear skies for the opening ceremony. Today, cloud seeding is no longer just shooting chemicals into the sky, but has become a complex climate control process. Cloud seeding missions are guided by Doppler radar, forming a weather control station. For the Middle East, artificial rain is not only about increasing precipitation, it is part of a long-term strategy to restore groundwater, support desert agriculture, reduce dust and sandstorms, lower urban surface temperatures, and ultimately slow desertification, the region's greatest threat to life. In many cases, an artificial rainstorm is not merely a few millimeters of water falling to the ground, but a reviving dose for an ecosystem in crisis. Thanks to this technology, the Gulf region is gradually transforming the sky, something once entirely beyond human control, into a new kind of climate infrastructure that people can deliberately build and operate. Cloud seeding technology was once used by the United States during the war in Vietnam to prolong the rainy season, making enemy supply routes far more difficult to maintain. That event sparked global concern. If one nation could control the weather, could it potentially harm another? As a result, in 1977, nearly 100 countries signed the Environmental Modification Convention, which strictly prohibits the use of weather modification technology for military purposes. Yet today, even though the technology is deployed mainly for civilian goals, the core questions have never gone away. Does such deep human intervention risk disrupting the natural balance of ecosystems? Pioneer nations like Qatar understand very well that they are stepping into an entirely new frontier of science. The world loses about 12 million hectares of fertile land each year due to desertification. Qatar itself is witnessing a rapid increase in land degradation caused by harsh climate conditions and declining rainfall. Faced with this threat, Gulf countries have been forced to implement greening programs on an unprecedented scale. Qatar is expanding high-tech agricultural zones in the middle of the desert, building smart farms and using drip irrigation systems along with recycled water. Dubai is implementing a plan to plant one million trees, while other emirates are cultivating olive forests and palm groves thanks to artificial rainmaking technology. These green patches do not simply make the desert less barren. They function as ecological shields, preventing soil from being blown away, creating shade for residential areas, reducing urban temperatures, and most importantly, limiting the evaporation of groundwater in heat exceeding 45 degrees Celsius. Amid the dry sea of sand, small green dots are beginning to appear, the first signs of life in a new form of artificial climate. But once humans gain the ability to create rain, 
One major question immediately emerges, are we saving nature or changing it to fit our own design? But beyond all technical debates and the numbers showing increased rainfall, cloud seeding technology carries a profound humanitarian value that is rarely mentioned. In the context of climate change disrupting weather patterns that had remained stable for hundreds of years, this technology becomes one of the very few tools that allows humans to actively intervene and reduce risks without requiring massive infrastructure or investments beyond the capability of many poor nations. In agricultural regions that depend entirely on rainfall, a timely shower can determine the outcome of an entire harvest, helping crack soil recover, allowing crops to survive periods of drought, and more importantly, protecting the livelihoods of millions of families. In many places, artificial rain is not only a story of science, but a story of community. It helps people avoid having to migrate away from lands where their families have lived for generations, preventing cultural disruption that often occurs when communities are forced to abandon their homes because the environment can no longer sustain them. Cloud seeding technology also carries significant meaning for countries facing large-scale wildfire risks. An artificial downpour, even if it does not extinguish the fire completely, can reduce the heat of vegetation giving local forces a better chance to control the situation. In all these cases, every drop of rain, whether natural or artificial, carries the value of hope. From a strategic perspective, cloud seeding represents an important step in humanity's long-standing aspiration. Learning how to live in harmony with nature, without imposing, without confronting, but finding interventions that are gentle yet effective. This technology does not create new weather. It merely activates rain that already has the potential to form. In that sense, it resembles a form of dialogue with nature, subtle, cautious, and deeply responsible. And behind that choice lies a long-term vision. Instead of building massive structures to fight against the climate, humans seek to directly influence natural processes that already exist. This not only helps reduce costs, but also creates models that can be scaled for developing countries. Although it remains controversial, this technology conveys an important message. In an era of climate uncertainty, humans can still find ways to minimize damage without disrupting ecosystems. And in Qatar, where humans have even created artificial rain in the middle of the desert, the goal does not stop at cooling a building. The country is also aiming to build microclimate zones from a neighborhood to an entire district where temperature and humidity are controlled in real time, as if creating their own private weather. Under the 50 degrees Celsius heat of the Middle East, humans are no longer just living within a harsh climate, but learning how to make peace with it. From cooling an entire open-air stadium to using cloud seeding technology to create rain on demand, these efforts together form an ambitious declaration. Humanity does not resign itself to nature, but is learning to shape it through science. And here, in the vast desert, a grand experiment is unfolding, one that could become a model for humanity in the next century. In that future, rain and wind will no longer be matters of natural chance, but technical decisions. Although these technologies remain expensive, controversial, and full of risks, they still open a door never before seen in history the ability to engineer climate. And that is why Mandarin Tech pursues this story, because we are witnessing the moment humans touch one of the greatest powers science has ever offered. A new era where climate is no longer a destiny imposed on us, but a system we ourselves build.